What's going on, Mother Truckers? Uh, welcome to Mother Trucker News. Email us at mothertruckernews at gmail.com. You know, uh, I've had a lot of truck drivers ask me to interview this man because he is running for the Oval Office for the presidency of the United States. And he's a truck driver. And so today, I believe he's on the road driving now. He has his headset on. I don't know if it's a blue parrot or what, but we're going to learn a little bit about him today. And you tell me, what are your thoughts about him? But he told me if he's in power, he's getting rid of the FMCSA head <laughs> right at the beginning. You know, these truck drivers to know that the change within our industry starts at the head of the DOT and the FMCSA. The woman that is in charge of the FMCSA, the moment I become president, she's on borrowed time. No, but let's get into this today, and I, I think this is a, a very interesting topic and a, a very uh, interesting man. And you know, let's let's get to know him a little bit and see what your thoughts are about him. So let's get into today's show. What's going on, Mother Truckers? Welcome to Mother Trucker News. Email us at MotherTruckerNews at gmail.com. You know, I've had actually drivers uh, ask me to reach out to this man before, and, and I've had an opportunity to talk to Anthony, and I, I thought, look, this be a great opportunity because there's probably not that many truck drivers and owner-operators out there that are uh, running for president of the United States of America. So, you know, Anthony Hudson, uh, I appreciate you. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Well, I appreciate you having us on, Alex. I know we've been talking uh, here and there over the last couple of months trying to make this interview happen. So I'm just glad that we're finally able to come together uh, with our schedules and, 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 and put this show on for all of our drivers out there because I think there's a message that they need to hear since they finally have representation trying to move into Washington. I got you. I got you. You know, so the first thing first is, you know, it sounds like, uh, uh are you at work right now? What are you doing? Oh man. I, I started at, at five thirty, six o'clock this morning. And unfortunately I'm still driving, trying to get back home tonight. So, uh, for all of our listeners, if you drive a truck, I feel you brothers and sisters, uh, these long days and snowstorms and, you know, slow traffic, it, it gets you, but I know what it's all about and I'm out here doing it with you guys. I got you. So, hey, we got a, a, a truck driver out here currently driving. You know, uh, I'm sure 100% talking on your headset. So you're paying attention to the road. I'll put that disclaimer out there, right? I am. I got my earbuds in. Thank you, Apple. Um, <laughs> and uh, both hands on the wheel right now. Yeah, I hear you. So how, how long have you been a driver for, brother? Uh, I got my CDL back in 2001 when I was in the Army. I, I joined the Army right after 9-11 two days after 9-11 to be exact and uh went to port leonard wood missouri and then went over to uh port jackson south carolina where i got my cdl and started driving heavy equipment for the for the military mm, so you've been at this for a while bro it's been a pretty minute you know so here, here's the first question that i i, I want to know is what makes you uh wake up in the morning and say man i'm gonna run for president of the united states well, you know, that, that it's a great question, and I, I get this question all the time. And the more people ask, the more I think about how to respond to this. And, you know, first and foremost, my family. You know, I, I've got two children. I've got a son that will be 15 next month uh, or in January, first part of January, and one that just turned 13. And I am not happy with where our country is, and I want to do my part to make it or leave it in a better position than when I came up in this world. And right now it's just, I'm scared that if something were to happen to me, that my kids just would kind of be stranded in purgatory in this country. So first and foremost, I, I want to do this to, to, to protect the future of my children, your children, all of our drivers out there, their children, their grandchildren, uh, because we can all agree that our country is definitely headed in the wrong direction. And with so many people complaining and, and arguing about their political stance or where they think the country should go, nobody was stepping up and doing anything. So I decided that I would be that one. I would be that guy, that blue collar guy, that tr truck driver, that grassroots family man that would stand up and make a run 
for the Oval Office because I feel like we, the 99% of this country, can come together if we want these changes to be made and we have to do it together. And this is where it starts. Okay. No, you know, it, it's very interesting because usually I, you know, sometimes I do talk about topics that have to do with politics, but for the most part, I usually don't. But, you know, in this uh, case scenario, it's a truck driver that's running for president. So, you know, uh, everybody that will be listening to this and watching this on social medias, you know, let's get into a couple of these questions. You know, there's uh, some concerns that you had and you felt that if you got into position that you could help make a change for truck drivers. So, you know, let's let's jump in. It. Let's get into the first topic. Um, you know, uh, you text me and you said, you know, there's something about the ELD. Uh, if you were president, what's going to change with the ELD? Well, the ELDs are going to are going to become a thing of the past. I don't like them. I don't like how they operate. Um, I don't like, you know, if I pull into a major manufacturer or plant somewhere uh, on a paper log, I can put that I'm there at 8 a.m. and leave it that way until I'm ready to leave the plant. But if you have the ELD going, once you like pull in, you check in, maybe go over the scale. Once you break that five mile an hour mark, that ELD kicks back in, even though you're just driving you know, across maybe 30 acres to get to a dock on the other side of the plant, your ELD kicks back in and starts taking away from your your 11-hour drive time. I don't like not having control of what I do during the day and my time. I know if I stop for fuel, it doesn't necessarily take 15 minutes. Uh, I know that I don't need to sit here and try and rely on electronics to keep track of my day. I would rather be in control of my day and, you know, a lot of people like the, the, the old paper logs. Uh, some people don't, but it, it's not that difficult to do. And I think that getting rid of the ELD is just one benefit, uh, benefit that we can contribute to our drivers to help them maximize their day and their earning potential, because I think the ELD slow us down. I honestly do. Mm, you know, because the, the big one that they always want to bring up with ELD is safety. Uh, do you yourself uh, believe that the ELD keeps truck drivers safe at all? No, I don't. I, I don't think a, a device that connects to my truck is going to change my driving pattern uh, or whether I get tired and pull over or stop. It, it doesn't tell me those things. I tell myself those things. And if we think back to the beginning of this, the ELD was created for, I believe it was Warner Enterprise, to help cut down their violations that they were having, but that shouldn't stronghold or strong arm the rest of us that are out here doing what we're supposed to do, being safe and, and knowing our bodies and knowing what we can and can't do during our 14 hour workday. Mm. No, Hey, you know, uh, you're making a lot of sense to me. You know, um, other truckers uh, comment down below, uh, you know, where's your stance on that? You know, um, I'm going to just go through these, some of these questions because, you know, um, <laughs> You felt strongly about it, and I, I want to give you the opportunity to talk about it. You know, DEF, what are your thoughts about that, brother? You know, I the DEF system, I, I personally experienced this last winter. I had a sensor go out in my DEF, and it took the, – the part was on back order for 11 weeks, and I had to mm. rent a truck from Ryder for 11 weeks at almost $1,200 a week to wait for a – a $500 part to come in and $200 worth of labor, it cost me $15,000, you know, just to have a sensor replaced in my DEF system. Uh, it, it was ridiculous. The point of DEF is to make our exhaust burn cleaner from what I understand. And after doing some research, the folks of the engineers over in Germany, let's say, let's say, I don't know how many steps there are to cleaning diesel. But let's say there's five steps to cleaning diesel. The Germans used all five steps and they burned their diesel through their trucks without a DEF system where the Americans cleaned the diesel four steps. And that fifth step is the creation of the DEF system to make up for not cleaning it that one more step. And I think sometimes if we just mirror what someone else is doing that's productive and successful, it'll save us all a lot of time, money, and expense going down the road. I don't like the DEF system because it's expensive. I don't like 
you know, in the winter time after after running all summer long, I'd fill up my depth tank maybe two times over the summer. But in the winter time, if you're not paying attention, you got to fill it up every time you fuel up your truck for whatever reason. I just mm. think it's an obstacle. I think it's a it's, it's like having a boat. It's a money pit. And I think if we do away with the depth system and mirror what the Germans do as far as cleaning our diesel, we clean it from the beginning so it burns cleaner as it goes through our trucks and out our exhaust. That's the only reason we have death in the United States is because we don't fully purify and clean the diesel the way they do overseas. Mm. You know, so the direction of the administration now that wants to go fully electric by 2050, your thoughts? Uh, go back to the nursing home and stay there, Joe. Uh, we, we cannot go to electric trucks in this country. We cannot have anatomic driving truck, self-driving trucks in this country. Driving a semi, and for every one of you men and women that are out there doing this right now, you will agree with me. Driving a truck across country or locally requires a specific level of human interaction. You have got to have it. Uh, these sensors that they put on these trucks uh, to drive themselves, are we going to rely, are we going to rely on these trucks to basically go cross country on a sensor that could go out? It could be covered with ice, causing the truck to respond differently. It could be a muddy sensor, again, causing the truck to respond differently. What about, what about uh, unhooking from your fifth wheel? What about opening the doors to your trailer, lowering your landing gear? pulling off your glad hand to remove yourself from a trailer. Who's going to do all these things with these self-driving mm. trucks and the electric trucks? It, what is it like? It, it, it's over an hour to charge the truck uh, for what? 400 miles, 500 miles. And then yeah, you infrastructure. Stop yeah. We got a whole bunch of stuff going on with that. You know, I, yeah, and, and we don't have that infrastructure. We don't have that capability for semis to pull off the road and charge for an hour or two hours or three hours or whatever it is to go another 400 miles down the road. It takes me on average at a quarter tank of fuel to fill up about 10 minutes, 10 minutes, pull up both saddlebags, go inside, pay, come back out, file my receipt, get back on the road, 10 minutes. And I can go in my truck. Uh, I can go just under a thousand miles for a full tank. Mm. Why would I want to spend four, five, six hours of my day charging my truck? By then, I run out of my HOS, and I'm really only getting about, what, 500 miles a day, 450 miles a day total? No, It doesn't I mean, make sense to me. We, we can't push freight in this country fast enough with electric vehicles, and it just it seems absurd to me how much they're trying to promote artificial intelligence when we really need to find a fix for natural stupidity. That's something mm -hmm. we really need to work on. You know, um, you know, the biggest part of trucker right now, the rates are, are in the sewers, they're in the garbage. I mean, you know, if you were to be in power, is, is there even a way to make the rates go back up? I think the rates, I, I think the rates can always go up. Uh, but right now, what we have is a backward system where the cost of living goes up, fuel goes up, and rates go down. Uh, it, it seems like a lot of these brokers are taking a large chunk of what we're doing uh, when they don't deserve it. Uh, I think these drivers need to be empowered with the ability to make money. And if that means lower brokerage fees by law, 5%, 6%, not 8%, not 10%, not 12%, so be it. Should the should the broker be able or be forced to pay for lumber fees? Absolutely. No driver who is hauling freight across this country should ever have to pay a lumber fee out of their pocket and come straight from their profit of the load, which isn't much as it is. We need to get back to fundamental uh, logistics. So when the cost of living goes up, when diesel goes up, the cost of freight's going to go up so that we can continue to make our money out here on the road. A lot of people think what we do is easy. It's not. Grab a steering wheel, sit in the truck, run 700 miles down the road in 11 hours and tell me how easy that is after about day 10. Yeah. You know, it, it's not easy. 
Um, we have to watch out for the four wheelers. We have to watch out for weather and construction. There's so much that goes into our job. And as, as an owner of a trucking company, I don't feel I'm getting paid enough. And I know my drivers aren't getting paid enough, but I have to do what I have to do to take care of my family and my company, but I'm not happy. I hmm. am an unhappy owner because I can't pay my drivers what I want to pay them before COVID happened. Since COVID, we've had to we've had to change the way we pay our drivers. And luckily for me, they love working with me. They stay with me. Uh, I haven't had any turnover in the last five years. It's been great, but I still feel bad that I can't pay them what they deserve. And I know that they deserve to me making 28, 32, $35 an hour out here on the road doing what we do. You know, after, you know, just talking to you for, you know, the last 10, 15 minutes, you know, I, I know that you're in touch with truck drivers. So it, here's a question for you. What are your realistic chances that you feel that you have of winning? You know, what I feel my realistic chance of winning versus how do I think the people are going to vote are two very, very different things. I think that if we had a platform to get our message out to everyone in this country, truck drivers, doctors, lawyers, construction workers, uh, electricians, plumbers, bankers, people that work in the grocery store, or the Dollar General, we bring common sense politics to this country. Our slogan is people before politics. And we can preach and preach and preach and preach till we're blue in the face. But what it comes down to is, are the voters motivated enough to make a change? If mm. you want to clean out the swamp, if you want to cut the head off the snake in government, it starts with changing the way you vote. Get to know all of the candidates. Do your research. Find the right man or woman that fits your agenda and support them 100%. And when I say that, I mean donate to their campaign. Put up uh, information about them on your social media platform. Share their information with friends and family because it will spread like a wildfire in this country because there's so many people, Democrats, Republicans, independents alone, that want change in this country because we're tired of old, you know, elderly people running for office and, and getting that same, that same type of political... Uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, representation. We hmm. need a younger face. We need a younger ideology in, in the White House. And that literally has to start with the candidates willing to take the plunge, willing to get out there and fight the corruption. And two, the voters changing the way they vote. I think we have a great chance of winning. In 24, maybe not. But in 28, I will have a platform and I will be a force to reckon with because we will have at that point six years of campaigning. I'm not stopping. When, mm. the, when the election's over, I'm not stopping. I'm going to continue to travel the country. I'm going to continue to campaign. I'm going to continue to push the narrative through social media until mainstream media decides to pick up this campaign because it's what the people need to hear. So 2028 is our realistic goal. And I think that we have a very good shot, you know, 65, 70% shot of being more recognized in 28, but you got to start somewhere. And who would have thought, Alex, that a blue collar truck driver could announce that he was running for president in August of 22 and mm. reach over 65 million people 15 months later. There it is. No, you know, you know, the mother trucker news is a, a channel, a platform for truck drivers before anything. And so you are a truck driver before everything. You know, and so that's why, you know, I wanted you to be on the show and to share your ideology. And if any of these mother truckers, you know, uh, believe in the same ideology and 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 want to see this change. And like you said, then where can they go to check you out? Well, we have a website. It's uh, Anthony Hudson 2K24 dot com. Mm -hmm. You can join our campaign. Uh, help us push the message across the country. You can buy merchandise on our website. You can read the bio. We've got policies up on our website. And you can even make donations to our campaign from the website. But I want these truck drivers to know that 
the change within our industry starts at the head of the DOT and the FMCSA. The woman that is in charge of the FMCSA, the moment I become president, she's on borrowed time. I will replace her with someone who has driven a truck, knows what the law should be, and knows what regulations we need to exempt and get rid of because I'm tired of the government having their hands in our pockets, our jobs, our homes, and our future. We have to take back our government. We have to take back our country. And the most important job in this country is driving a truck. Everything you buy comes in on a truck at one point or another comes in on a truck. And if we were to ever lose this industry, this country would suffer greatly. So we're going to start by removing the head of the FMCSA and replacing her with a driver, a resume that has driven a million plus miles across this country that can stand up and represent every driver and start helping me, you know, create more parking spots, less toll roads, less um, state fees for drivers that, that have to pay to drive through states like Connecticut. We want to empower our drivers and motivate them to get up and go to work every day and keep this country running. And we cannot do that with just one man running for president. We have to hit the FMCSA and the DOT as well and, and fill those spots with our drivers if we want true change in this industry. No, hey, I hear you, brother. No, hey, I appreciate you for being on the show. You know, Mother Truckers, you know, uh, Anthony Hudson, you know, um, I'll put links and information down below. Uh, you know, this is a uh, uh, like 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 he said. A lot of people already know who he is, but you know, for people that don't, you know. And I'm gonna keep my eye on you. I'm gonna see what you're up to. I'm gonna see if you change a little bit. I'm gonna see, you know, what you're doing. You know. Well, I I promise the people of this country that I am I am doing this for the people, from the people, and I will not be bought. I've turned down corporate money and I've turned down lobbyist money because I will not push their narrative. I don't care if I have to fund my campaign on my own. I will do it with the American people at heart, and I will do it so that we can protect our future for our children and grandchildren. There's no other reason why any of us should want to go into Washington and deal with that job unless it's to truly protect our, our country, to serve our country, to make sure that our people are represented and we the people goes back to controlling the government the way it was intended. That's what I'm trying to change. Hey, no. Well, at the end of the day, Anthony, I appreciate you for being on the show. And, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see how uh, truck drivers uh, react to you. I'm glad to have you on, you know, as a truck driver first. And, you know, well, I wish I you the best. and I wish you safety and health, you know. Well, I appreciate it, Alex. And uh, we'll do this again sometime. And for all you guys and gals that are listening, hey, Keep, keep it between the lines and stay safe out there and, and just know that I got your sick no matter what's going on. I'm here hey, for you. that's what I'm talking about. Talk to you later. Drive home safe, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you.